Welcome back guys to another one. Today I want to show you I think the fastest USB external drive that I ever tested on the channel. I mean this thing is so fast that I can't even test it on my main rig. I had to rely on a PCI X4 adapter card so I can access the full USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 bandwidth. So yeah let's play with it. There are a handful of external USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 as in 20 GB per second SSD enclosures on the market that can offer these speeds and even more impressively up to 8 terabytes like this model from Team Group. Despite so many new bandwidth protocols, we still don't have USB 20 GB per second ports on motherboards as a mainstream feature, so this M20 SSD is almost, if I may say it, like a future proof item. Alas, let's test it out and see how it performs in real life conditions. The M200 lineup consists of 6 different size options to choose from, with models from 250GB all the way to 8TB. The one you see in the video is the 1TB variant. The M200 comes shipped in Team Group's popular branding design with a visual depiction of the actual drive on the front. This same drive is nested in the middle of the box with an all blackout scheme. As for accessories, you get just the main essentials, the two USB cables. Just make sure that you are aware that only the Type-C to Type-C cable offers the full 20 GB per second bandwidth, while the Type-A to Type-C up to 10 GB per second. The overall design takes great inspiration from the popular sniper rifle the Shaytech Intervention M200, hence the same name is used. Even the Picantini rail system is used as another inspiration, which is not just for cosmetic reasons but also to increase the surface area for cooling. The M200 is very compact and light, at just 83 grams, and it's rated up to a 2 meter drop test. Unfortunately, it does not possess an IP rating to further match the rugged theme. This is a Type-C USB port that will offer you up to 20 GB per second if you have a free USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 port. This is achieved thanks to the inner NVMe M.2280 SSD in combination with an Asmedia USB bridge. A Fison E16 controller takes care of the communication to the 96 layer 3D Micron QLC NAND cells and even 2GB Hinex DDR4 DRAM chip is present. The top gap is wide enough to perfectly accommodate a 550 paracord string, again to match with the military theme here. This means you can easily make your own quick portability hacks. Like I mentioned in the intro, the motherboard on my main rig, the Asus B550i Strix, only offers USB 3.2 Gen 2, as in 10 GB per second. So to fully test the claim 20 GB per second, I had to resort to my secondary system where I had the Silverstone ECU06 PCIe adapter card. Also, Team Group claims that this is compatible with any software, so I decided to start testing exactly that. Here it is connected to my smartphone, which took like 7 seconds to appear in my file manager. I did a quick test where I copied onto the M200 drive a 2GB video file and as you can see this transfer completed in no time whatsoever. Regarding my rig, every synthetic benchmark tops out at 10GB per second bandwidth so nothing special here to report. Now here are my real life copy tests. First we will transfer to the SSD a single 9.5 GB video file to test the burst speed followed by a big 124 GB installation folder from Assassin's Creed Valhalla game. In both the burst speed test and even the large file transfer test, the M200 1TB SSD drive maintains a sustained and constant write speed because it possesses an incredibly generous SLC cache, over 150 GB at least from my calculations. So if you even manage to exhaust this cache in one go, it will write at its native QLC NAND cells, which will be around, what, 140 megabytes per second. Regarding the operating temps, the M200 behaves really well because the M2 drive inside has a thermal pad that makes full contact with the outer case, thus the whole unit acts like one big heatsink. Using an infrared thermometer, the M200 never went above 50 degrees Celsius, even in a hot summer day. Then I decided to test it on my girlfriend's 2020 Apple MacBook Pro M1 13-inch because it has a Thunderbolt 3 compatible port, which should be sufficient to offer 20 GB per second bandwidth at least. However, there is a highly known conflict for any drive outside the Apple ecosystem and thus I only got barely over SATA 600 speeds. 
Finally, after using the aforementioned Silverstone PCIe X4 USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 adapter card, at last we get to see the M200 performing to its maximum potential. So there you have it guys, the T-Force M200 is one impressive bit of kit since it's compact, light and very fast, as long as you have a Gen 2 X2 USB port. This in itself can be a bad thing or a good one depending how you look at it. Bad as in you might need a PCIe X4 adapter card to fully access the available bandwidth, but you are stuck if you have a gaming console for example. However, it can be a good thing because this protocol might take a while until it becomes standard on all quality tier level motherboards, like the new stuff from AMD with the new M5 platform, etc. Thus, it's like a future proof item if I may say it. With storage options available up to 8TB, a heat dissipating design and practical traits, all of this make the T-Force M200 external SSD a highly desirable piece of gear. Thank you for watching guys and what other USB external drives do you use? See you in the next one. Alex out.